<sighs> Hi, Internet. Welcome back to Raffo. Welcome to the Cosmere Connection series. Yes, that is a capital C Connections, where today we'll be talking about how all of these tie into the second half of this. We'll be starting with part four of Oathbringer. So if you missed the first half, click here. Spoilers, 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 spoilers. First, interludes. Venli's spreading singer propaganda while secretly harboring a light spren, which can communicate through the rhythms. The old songs speak highly of surge binders. We meet Mem, who probably doesn't have blue hair. This is Mem with blue hair. She's awesome. But so is Mem, especially at getting out strange stains like Aether out of clothing. Mem's new assistant destroys a painting by Dandos Oilsworn, a reference to Dan Dos Santos and the artist who trained Shalon. Mraze now has two heralds, Talns and Erythru, hidden by Amaram, and now Shalash. And now we get to part four. The epigraphs here are all from Hesse's Mythica, the book Shalon got about the Unmade, of whom we've now seen, or at least seen the influence of, six out of nine. Yelignar just got eight by the late Queen of Alethkar, which grants access to all surges in exchange for... Uh, well, we'll get to that, won't we? This epigraph actually mentions another epigraph from Way of Kings. Chapter 45 is an excerpt from Yasna's notes, where she mentions and discounts stories of Yelignar. Sya'anat corrupts Spren, and was apparently most feared by Ancient Radiance because of this. Nergaul is the thrill. Moalach causes death rattles. Ashert Marn is the heart of the revel, as seen just barely in Kolinar. Ba Otto Mishram connected with the Parsh during the False Desolation, and maybe sealed up somewhere? Chamorri a.k.a. the Dust Mother, Rishafir got kicked out of her apartment by Shalon, and Digonarthus, also referred to as the Black Fisher, maybe nuked Imia? I've got some theories about these folk, which I will definitely dive into in another video. Dalinar remembers drinking with a beggar, Yezrian. He casually and insanely spouts off some references to the Unmade, Torture, and Braze. We get Naj's personal map of the Sea of Lost Lights, which is basically the Alethkar section of Shadesmar. The gang is right here. As people die in the physical realm, Kolinar is captured. They see the lights of souls go out, but no one appears. Why this is different than what happens on at least Scadriel, I do not know. They're sort of getting chased by Ashert Marn, so everyone starts playing in the ball pit looking for something to stand on. The bead of the castle that Shalon grabs is the exact same bead Yasna interacts with in the prologue of Words of Radiance. Apparently there's a lot of minor connections like that that Brandon throws in. Like, Syl at one moment looks like Shalon on the beach, when at that exact moment, Shalon is on the beach after the shipwreck. It's overwhelming. <laughs> they leapfrog over to a narrow spit of land, and Azure's hair turns gray from exhaustion. We finally get some non-interlude viewpoint chapters from Zeth. When Nail used a regrowth Fabrio on him after he got dropped through a high storm, it was a bit too late, so he's got that weird after-image thing going on that we saw in Edge Dancer. He's at Skybreaker tryouts in the Pure Lake, which Nightblood remembers from conversations with Rasher. The Pure Lake, not the Skybreakers. They break down the five ideals of the Skybreakers. Zeth trained with Honor Blades before being named Truthless. He knew a voice like Nightblood's, a single voice in his mind when he was young. <sighs> Nightblood mentions Vivana, Vasher, and Shashara, who Zeth relates to Shalash. Is there a connection there? He finally draws Nightblood to execute the Prison Warden, and colors deepen in the vicinity, because he's so invested. Nightblood eats the guy entirely, and Zeth notices the skin of his hand has been bleached gray. I wonder if that's why Azure hides her hands. Vivenna apparently carried Nightblood for a long time, but never drew him. Then again, Sword Nimi is the definition of an unreliable narrator. I want that Warbreaker sequel! Zeth swears the second ideal, which is accepted by a Skybreaker of the fourth ideal. Adolin, Azure, and Kaladin perform their kata, as taught to them by Vasher slash Zahel. Azure's scars seem to have faded. Last time she crossed Shadesmar, it took four weeks, which gives us a rough approximation of potentially the distance from Nalthus to Roshar? We get some info on the different wines of Roshar. You can see this in color on Brandon's website. Someone needs to ask him about Naja's embarrassing tattoo. The plants that grow in Shadesmar are crystalline, contrasted to the plants in Scadriel's cognitive realm, which, at least when Kelsier was wandering around in secret history, were brown and leaking mist. They're probably green now. 
Syl didn't like it in Lasting Integrity. Kaladin isn't her first bond. She previously bonded an elderly Radiant who died in his first battle. Rather than killing her, she fell asleep for a thousand years. As one does. Mraze is with Ayalai in the Coalition of Monarchs. So is Aunak, the Natan ambassador, who we met before at a feast at the Shattered Plains. Side note, a couple years ago it used to be so easy to pick out the important bits in the summaries on the Coppermind. If you haven't used the Coppermind, do it. It's amazing. Thank you, 17th Shard, for this incredible resource. Because only the important bits had their own articles. We've gotten to the point where basically every minor character has an article on them, which means I'm needing to sort through the text itself a lot more carefully than I had to previously. Which is why this research is taking so long. Sorry about it. We're getting a couple pseudo-flashbacks from Kaladin as they go through Shadesmar. Training in Amaram's army, an escape attempt as a slave, and eventually after Tien's death. There we finally meet the Terra he mentioned back in Way of Kings. Kaladin always survives. A not entirely unique sentiment in the Cosmere. I'm a survivor, I'm not gonna give up. Cal sneaks up to the lighthouse. <laughs> which is powered by a cognitive bonfire a la Kelsier in Secret History. And meets Raino, the Elantrian that Rayodin put through the perpendicularity in Elantris. There's a lot in this little interaction. He's got two paintings on the walls. One of the city of Elantris, and another of possibly Devotion's perpendicularity. The people kneeling before a bright white mirror is also on some murals in Elantris, depicting the shard pool there. Kaladin touches his crystal ball, probably filled with fortune juice, similar to the connection juice sphere the Iri had in Secret History, and sees a vision as the high storm passes. The Rai Oracle asks what heightening Cal is, swears by Domi, and asks if surge binding has begun again, implying he's been here for a really long time. Azure mentions the gods of her land glimpsing the future the returned. They trade for some canned food, probably from Scadriel. Zeth is playing with chalk in the Pure Lake. Nightblood mentions Vara Trelides, which is Denth's real name. Zeth almost swears the third ideal, but Nail shows up to tell secrets. The ship that picks up the Shadesmar crew is crewed by Lightspren, what Tambor is. In the Cognitive Realm, they have bodies of what looks like bronze. Bronze, which when burned by a Mistborn, allows the user to hear rhythms. And how does Tambor communicate to Venli? Maybe a coincidence, but there's probably a relationship there. Cal almost recognizes a rhythm to the beads as the ship moves. There's also lines of copper plating running throughout the ship, which he notices are vibrating. Yeah, the metal has to be doing something. Copper. Hiding the ship from larger spren? Or is it ferrochemical-y, sharing thoughts? Shalon theorizes they use it to communicate somehow. Mandras, Lux spren, are pulling the ship which also probably bond to great shells and sky eels to help them be less heavy. First time we saw them was with chasm fiends. Mandras will occasionally disappear or drop into the physical realm. We haven't heard that happening with other spren. What's going on there? Or maybe we ha- I don't know. Could it have something to do with bonding? Dalinars in Vadenar after their thrill-stoked civil war. Teravangian talks about a metal that falls from the sky that can block a shard blade. Is that just aluminum? Or did Tanavastium fall to Roshar when honor was splintered? The thrill chases him back to Urithiru. He manages to summon a something to activate the Oath Gate. He finds a bottle of wine in Adolin's room. Violet, prepared in its strength. Adolin sews himself some new clothes. Azure admits to knowing royalty, including one woman which left it all behind, which would be herself. Her shard blade seems to be related to duties abdicated or burdens set down. She also discovered when she was younger that being too open with strangers went poorly for her, probably a reference to her experience with Denth. Captain Iko's dad is a Deadeye, a former Radiant Spren. His daughter is apparently off chasing stupid dreams. Is that Tambor? The gang arrives at Celebrant, and boy are there connections here. This city is a trading hub in Shadesmar, so we see artifacts and peoples from all over the place. Spren of different varieties, Cultivation Spren, Ink Spren, Cryptics, Peak Spren, Ash Spren, Mist Spren, plus the Light Spren, and Sill, that's eight out of nine not Bondsmith Spren. And then there's the thingummies they see. Most exciting is probably the silvery chain from Threnody. Real expensive, but can anchor users through cognitive anomalies. Like this one. 
Kaladin's art browsing and sees a piece from the Court of the Gods on Nalthus, specifically one painted by Nenefra, who was Lightsong's favorite. That painting is probably pretty old. How it survived destruction and got here is probably a really interesting story. Adolin points out a bunch of different fashions. You pretty boy. Including someone wearing a shikwa with pants. Sill's got a bounty on her head, to be returned to lasting integrity, which she takes advantage of to get them on a ship. The fused chasing them doesn't pursue. Honor Spren give it pause, apparently. Dalinar has a vision of Noadon again. Compare Wave Kings chapter 60. But this time, it's not from the Stormfather. Noadon talks directly to him, and he seems to know things that Dalinar would not. Realmatic theory being the biggest. Still not sure where that vision came from. Navani mentions how Gavilar had gone strange and dark near the end of his life. The released prologue to Stormlight 5 expands on that. Yasna has notes on Renarin's writing of the Everstorm warning in Words of Radiance, as well as a mention of the stump coming to Azimir. Flashback to Gavilar's funeral. The soulcaster who performs the statuing is described very similarly to the peak spren Kaladin just saw in Celebrant. Dalinar hears Yasna reading from the Way of Kings, and questions if words can give off light. Words of Radiance? It took Yasna almost eight hours to finish. Produced audiobooks today average about nine to 10,000 words per hour, so Way of Kings is likely 72 to 80,000 words long, probably on the lower end to give Yasna breaks to drink water at least. That puts it between Alcatraz and Rhythmatist, or about the length of the first Harry Potter. Hey, by the way, trans people are real and deserve respect. More on that in June. <laughs> Nail and Zeth head south to Marat, to a ruined courthouse. Nail dual wields a living shard blade and his own honor blade. All other honor blades, apart from Yesrians and, of course, Talns, Zeth says are with the Shin. Nail's the only herald that joined his own order, and the only skybreaker to reach the fifth ideal, becoming the Law. I am the law! He tells Zeth about the prelude to the Stormlight Archive. We see Malata, Taravangian's Dustbringer, use division on a table. Her spren is totally fine with acting against the other Radiants. The Shadesmar gang are possibly heading to Unyielding Fidelity, which sounds pretty similar to Lasting Integrity. Azure is chasing Nightblood and, by extension, Vasher, who she calls a criminal. The sword was supposedly seen in Constant Loyalty a few years ago. Shallan sorting through beads and comes across the soul of a stick. Knowing Brandon's love of tiny connections, is that the stick? The ship captain drops a lot of info about Honor Spren and Radiance. We find out Syl is of the first generation of Honor Spren created by the Stormfather. All others before that were directly from Honor. All of them, except Syl, died in the Recreants. The Stormfather eventually had ten more kids, and since then it's been genealogical. The Nihel Bond is dangerous without Honor. There aren't enough checks on their power. We learn later that Honor was supporting the Radiants in their defense of Roshar, till he went nuts. He implies that the only way to break a bond of the final ideal is through death of both Spren and Human. Cal gets thinking about the ideals, including the unknown and also daunting fourth ideal, and he pulls some Windspren into Shadesmar. They live almost entirely in the physical realm, to the point that they're incredibly rare, and the captain has never seen them before. Dalinar pulls Venli into a vision, the original Noadon one. Then, this happens. Dalinar almost manifests a shardplate gauntlet. Odium arrives. He's apparently the only god who knows pain or cares. Disagreed with by the Stormfather later. The fused catch up to the Shadesmar ship. Side note, I think it's really funny that in Shadesmar you don't have to bail, you have to sweep. Azure's staying, still looking for Zahel. She asks sailors to cut bales of cloth into certain shapes because she's totally gonna go awakening crazy on them fused. I'm sad we didn't get to see that. Dalinar's in Thalen City. Man, fast travel makes things so much easier. Amaram's a jerk still, Malat is working the Oath Gates, and the Stormfather is tight-lipped about the third sibling. He says that Honor was more obsessed with the oaths themselves than with the meaning behind them near the end. Proof of the shardic intent overpowering the vessel. Someone else is whispering, unite them to Dalinar. Teravangian's bomb drops. The Elis Steely translation. A bit of a visualization as to what that is, though. A stele is a large stone monument, often used as gravestones, boundary markers, or memorials of some kind. The Rosetta Stone is technically a stele. This one, written by a Dawn Singer, one of the original inhabitants of Roshar, claiming the first desolation was the invasion of humanity, was presumably found in the city of 
Ila, just northwest of Shinovar. I've had pretty heated discussions about this, why that would be such a huge revelation as to disrupt the Council of Monarchs and make everyone freak out. But I don't think the fact that humans are the conquerors, the colonialists, the usurpers, is the issue. The main point, the point that strikes fear into the rest of the coalition, is that humans fled their other world because it was destroyed by surge binding. And now they're being led by a surge binder, with more and more surge binders appearing. It's like realizing the cool toy that's coming out, the thing that everyone wants for Christmas, is actually a detonation switch for a nuclear bomb. And that button is just so pressable. But yeah, also the real Voidbringers were inside us all along. Cal remembers Terra after Tien's death. He mentions it took him a long time to find a spear that was long enough, because as described in Way of Kings, his spear is a good hand span longer than anyone else's. She got a scribe's job in Morn's vault, which is right here. Final batch of interludes, the most important one being Risen, for like, lots of reasons. She's working for Queen Fen in Thalen City, being fully paraplegic and it's rough. Vistum comes to visit. He's taken an appointment as Minister of Trade, which is a big deal. Risen's met with Renarin, and regrowth didn't work for her. She still got her pot of dumb grass, which Cheery Cheery likes to try and hide in. Vistum gives her the deed to a brand new, state-of-the-art ship called the Wandersail, referring to the story Hoyd told Kaladin in Way of Kings. This. They head into the Queen's Vault, accompanied by a secret light weaving fused and Cheery Cheery. They make it to Vault 13, which probably isn't a Fallout reference, and see the King's Drop, which is still blinding with stormlight after 200 years of being locked away. Fusedy gets to murdering. Here I go killing again. Then Cheery Cheery eats lunch, and Risen shoots him in the face. At roughly the same time, another light weaving fused, or at least that's what I thought the first three times I read this, but it's actually probably just a dude from the diagram, wearing Teft's jacket steals Yezrian's honor blade from Bridge 4. Rock and Bissig got sliced up, and Eth dies, joining his brother Mart, who didn't make it through the Battle of Narek. Thank you for watching! New videos are coming out every Friday, so please subscribe! Next week we'll be finishing up Oathbringer with all of the connections in part 5, and boy are there many! Yeah, I was originally planning on doing the second half all in one video, but when I put all the files in my editing software, it was 57 minutes long. So Oathbringer is a three-parter. Pray I don't alter it any further. Supporters on Patreon are able to watch all of my videos early, as well as get access to both my previous and future scripts and research notes. The rough cut of this whole second half has been available to them for a full week now. If you like my stuff, support me on Patreon. Then you can join the illustrious crew of the good ship Raffo, with Doug as the first mate, Matt as the second first mate, and the rest of the Dugs manning the sails and swabbing the boot deck. See you next week, and read and find out! Referring to the story Hoyd Toyd... Referring to the story Hoyd Toyd... Goodness. Or at least that's what I thought the first three times I read this, but it's actually... Oh, that's the battery. Dang it. Pause. Wearing Teft jacket steals Yezrian's... No space on memory card, son of a goose!